Juvenile probation, family violence outreach, and veterans court. Those are just some of the programs in jeopardy following Governor Greg Abbott's decision earlier this year. He pulled $1.5 million in funding to Travis County after a debate with Sheriff Sally Hernandez over the county's, quote, sanctuary city status. As the night beats Tina Shively found out, organizers of the programs are left wondering what will happen next. It's a place where parents form plans to kick their addictions and keep their kids. Associate Judge Aurora Martinez Jones presides over the Family Drug Treatment Court in Travis County. Nine years in, the Parents in Recovery program is so successful, state lawmakers used it as a model for a bill that could overhaul the state's child protective services program. So imagine the judge's concern when she found out Governor Greg Abbott was pulling funding for her program as well as for six others. The whole community of people that are very vulnerable and need this help, and I really am discouraged that it's come to this. Martinez Jones's program has lost its OOG, or Office of the Governor Grant, of more than $145,000. It funds a key piece of the recovery puzzle, frequent and random drug testing. That's where the accountability comes in, and that's where we're able to help the parents stay sober so that they can start working on real serious recovery. A smaller program, actually started by a mandate from Governor Abbott in 2013, is also on the list. The Phoenix Court has eight thriving, successful graduates, women with criminal records who were involved in some sort of sexual exploitation. And while you and I couldn't imagine the life that they led, by giving them this kind of support, we allow them to then imagine a new life so much better. Judge Mike Denton says he won't quit, even if the grant totaling over $214,000 goes away. The housing, the treatment, it pays for that. And we'd have to come up with other sources to do that. It will be difficult. But because the outcome is so good, we're going to keep trying. The Travis County Commissioner's Court is helping keep the programs afloat for now, but it's not clear how long they'll be able to do so. The commission plans to discuss its next steps in May. At the Travis County Justice Complex, Tina Shively, KVU News Nightbeat. Now here's some background on the sanctuary city issue in Travis County. It started when Travis County Sheriff Sally Hernandez unveiled a new policy in January letting illegal immigrants post bail unless it's for a serious charge such as murder or aggravated sexual assault. Hernandez says it's not the county's job to house inmates for immigration officials. Opponents say the policy offers a safe haven for undocumented immigrants. Multiple bills are currently working their way through the state legislature in response such as Senate Bill 4 which requires Texas cities and counties to comply with ICE. The governor continues to say Hernandez's policy will not be tolerated. As severe weather season approaches, some North Texans are concerned about the structure of their homes after finding things just weren't right. Just a perfect Friday night, right? Clear skies, temperatures have been comfortable. Still a little on the breezy side. Southeast wind at 10 miles per hour, a little gusty at times. Highs today running 10 degrees above average in the mid 80s. Thunderstorm chances still building for the weekend. The latest next.
As we brace for some storms that could turn severe this weekend, homeowners in North Texas are cleaning up after hurricane force winds hit homes this week. Brick facades were ripped off several homes in Rockwall. Now homeowners are finding several metal straps used to attach the brick to the house's frame were never actually attached. A contractor says that's not unusual. Builders get going, get going. Speed is everything, and so uh, the truth of the matter is sometimes it's just quicker to flip things up and blow and go and get your brick up as opposed to worrying about issues like this. For homeowners there, that's just one concern. They're trying to get repairs in now before they get a round of weekend rain. And speaking of weekend rain, we're going to get a round of storms as well. Hopefully not severe. And KVU Chief Meteorologist Albert Ramon in our Storm Center now. Albert, what are we looking at? Well, so we're going to break down the whole weekend for you, hour by hour. Tomorrow is not a washout, so if you do have plans outdoors, just be weather aware. We do have a chance of some storms in the afternoon. It's Sunday. That's kind of the main event. But let's break down Saturday. Have some plans in the morning. You'll be fine. There'll be some low clouds. There'll be some fog. There'll be some mist. And then in the afternoon and early evening, we'll introduce a 40% chance of a thunderstorm. And because we have been so humid and warm the last few days, a thunderstorm could be strong. But again, Sunday is kind of the big day for rain chances. 40% on Saturday, up to 80% on Sunday. Thunderstorms likely in the morning, mid morning, into the early afternoon. Some models are even suggesting we may get a little bit of a break, middle part of the afternoon, and additional storms late in the day. That's going to keep temperatures in the 70s. And again, some of that activity on Sunday could even be strong to severe. Here is the storm system for the weekend heading our direction. Now, tomorrow it's going to still be out towards the west in New Mexico. So, still a little too far out west to really impact our weather. Widespread. We'll start off with some fog, low clouds, and mist in the morning. And then in the afternoon, not widespread rain, but a chance of some isolated, strong thunderstorms. And then as we head towards Saturday night, the best chance of rain will be out around the Rio Grande, advancing this direction. A couple of storms could be strong on Saturday, but again, it's Sunday for the main system to arrive into West Texas. Some really good lift out ahead of that low. So an 80% chance of showers and thunderstorms Sunday morning, mid-morning into the early afternoon. And then it'll start to shift back off towards the east of us as we head towards Sunday night. Now here's the breakdown of the severe weather threat on Sunday. Scattered severe storms, a slight risk of severe weather in the Hill Country. And for the first time this spring, an enhanced risk of severe weather for the Austin Metro and then back off towards the east. Enhanced is kind of that category three of the severe weather scale, meaning that numerous severe thunderstorms will be possible on Sunday starting in the morning time, and all modes of severe weather will be something we're going to watch out for. Not just damaging wind and large hail, but even a couple of isolated tornadoes are going to be possible. Along with a severe weather threat, heavy rainfall will be with us, so some minor flash flooding is something we're also going to keep an eye on. Mainly on Sunday, though, one to two inches of rainfall for the entire weekend, but isolated amounts of up to three inches of rainfall will be possible. Oak and grass medium tomorrow, molds high, but all that's going to get washed out by Sunday morning, which is going to be at least the, the best news of it all with weekend rain. Allergy forecast found every day in the Statesman. Tonight's KB weather snapshot. It is our March winter taken earlier this week, Tuesday night to Wednesday morning, as those thunderstorms move through the area out in Dripping Springs. The winner, Jerry Moreno. Jerry just won himself $100 cash card from IBC Bank. Brand new contest starts Monday. Send me your photos at snapshot. At KV.com. So, not a washout Saturday, but we'll have to keep an eye on some isolated, intense thunderstorms in the afternoon and evening. Sunday, big time rain chances. Some of that could be severe. And then all next week, even into next weekend, whew, get in a break. The sun is back <laughs> and the temperatures are feeling nice. It's going to be a busy a weekend. Breath. Exactly. Yeah, you'll busy need weekend. a breath, especially because I know you'll be here for most of the weekend. Yeah, and just be weather aware. Have a way to get those watches and warnings on your smartphone, on the TV, weather radio, whatever. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, Albert. Thanks a lot, Albert. Well, a special section at a Texas Target has a lot of moms talking. And a teacher pranks his class. Their reaction is priceless.
The next word is spiku. Look, there's a spiku. S P E. Your next word, number 11, is. Mike, Mike, check. Mike, check. One, two, three, four, five. Welcome to the big show. Some fourth graders pranked by their own teacher. Even though it was a few days before April Fool's, Joe Dombrowski gave the kids a spelling test full of made up words and spellings. The next word is spiku. Look, there's a spiku. S P E E K U Z S L M N. There's silent letters at the end of that one. Yep. Well, he did use it in a sentence. I mean, it sounded like a word to me, right? But I'm, I'm not a smart man. The kids were understand, but I know what love is. <laughs> the kids were understandably baffled, audibly groaning. They got a lot of the questions wrong. After 10 grueling answers, he finally revealed the truth. Your next word, number 11, is April Fools, because this is an April Fools joke. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> the video has over 11 million views tonight. All right, look, we have to take a minute to talk about this girl, April the Giraffe. We know you're tired of it. We're over it, too. But this weekend, they say, could be, could be it. April's vets at Animal Adventure Park say she could give birth to her calf any time this weekend based on recent behaviors. They say that they're on standby, and when it does happen, they will stay live throughout the whole birthing process. I don't know. We've been burned so badly by April. I just, I just don't want to hey, give is her, my heart back to her. Her month is coming up, babe. You know, she's it been, is her month. April is taking so long to give birth to her calf, they're thinking of renaming her May. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. A local Target is generating a lot of discussion online. This photo shows a breastfeeding station at a Target in New Braunfels. It includes a basket with free breast pads. Company reps tell KVU the space is not something rolling out to other Target stores, but guests are welcome to breastfeed in public areas in the store if they choose to do so. They say fitting rooms are available for women who prefer to breastfeed their babies privately. Hmm. You see what I did there? Her name is April, oh, no. and it's taking long, so yeah. I moved it to May. Yeah, that was, that was Funny? Good. No? <sighs> They're having so much fun with these stories. Let's talk about another fun story. The Texas, Texas Relays created, <laughs> created some great competition. It creates another... <laughs> I can't match this. Another <laughs> stadium village. Well, you're going to enjoy this. When we come back. How far over is she now? A uh, minute 13. A minute what? 15? It says over a minute 13, but it's going to change. I know it's all Oh. Yeah, didn't they? Just fine. <clears throat> okay, we're going to do, we're going to kill final four, we're going to kill highlight of the night, and we'll end with spurs. So I'll do golf and spurs really fast. Yeah.
Wipe, 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 wipe. Please. Sorry, John. That's my bad. Thousands of track athletes and fans make the The pad has been ice cold. Texas Relays Weekend means you can add another town to the map of Central Texas. It centers around the track stadium down at UT with athletes camping out, making themselves at home. KB Sean Clinch has the story. Thousands of track athletes and fans make the annual pilgrimage to Austin for the Texas Relays. It's a hectic schedule. But where do these athletes go in between events? I'm hungry, what? <laughs> Addressing proper nourishment, hydration, and sleeping, it all takes place under the bleachers. It's mostly just like we like joke around and just kind of like get ready for the race. Now, it's somewhat shocking what you find underneath the bleachers at the Texas Relays. It's somewhat like a hotel. Blow up mattresses, all the food you could ask for, and the new addition right here that I've noticed from high school and collegiate athletes hammocks hung by the rafters of the bleachers. Trying to get some shut eye before the race, so. My apologies. In other words, what happens under the bleachers stays under the bleachers. Yeah, he did. There's actually an unofficial competition taking place under the bleachers at the Texas Relays, beginning with nap taking. I didn't bring it today, but I usually bring a cot. Yes, how do you guys rest up? Uh, naps, Pedialyte, protein. We'll have any of you ladies discussed. Wow. Let's make a list of what we need to bring next year. Um, I, we saw mattresses down there. We thought that was a good idea. We were like, wow, blow up mattresses. Didn't even think of that. But it's not all about sleeping. Everything that our coaches have told us that we need to work on, we're that's like, what they do. that's what yeah. they're talking about. Priceless Texas Relays experiences. Sean Clinch, KU Sports Night B. Let's talk a little golf. Jordan Spieth uh, getting ready for the Masters next week. Shoots a 77 today in Houston. Misses the cut, but he says that his team will, quote, strike fear in others at Augusta next week. Finally, a little basketball. San Antonio Spurs in Oklahoma City can't stop Russell Westbrook from getting another triple-double, but they can beat him. Kawhi Leonard gets the big play here down the stretch, and the Spurs get the win. We'll be right back.
The Bear County Sheriff's Office is searching for a teenage girl they believe is in danger and have issued an Amber Alert. They're looking for 13-year-old Gabriella Sanders. She's described as having brown hair, green eyes, and a blue sweatshirt. Sheriff's deputies believe she's with 22-year-old Logan Carter. They say the suspect is driving a black 2003 Subaru Outback with a Vermont license plate number of GBT894. So if you see them, you are asked to call the Bear County Sheriff's Department. All right, Albert's back to break it down for us. Yeah, tomorrow morning, low clouds, some fog, some mist drizzle. We'll look for an isolated chance of thunderstorms in the afternoon, but a good majority of us will stay dry on Saturday afternoon. It's Sunday where widespread showers and thunderstorms is at 80%, and some of those will be severe. All right, put those umbrellas in the trunk, and thank you for letting us be a part of your evening. Have a great weekend. <laughs> That's a good question. That's a very good question. I want I want golf and spurs. That's it. Golf and spurs.